crowd. All right, Jerusalem, I know you guys have waited a long, long time. Ladies and gentlemen, Louis C.K.
dirty mother. <laughs> Fucked a couple of dudes in her life. <laughs> not my mom. <laughs> not my mom. And I'm not saying that because she was a saint. I'm saying because I don't think anybody else. <laughs> I don't think anybody else to fuck my mom. I just don't think so. It's true. I really think she fucked my dad and after that, nobody. Anyway, maybe before that, I didn't see her before she fucked my dad. That's the thing I can say with certainty. I never laid eyes on my mother until after my dad had fucked her. You never get to know your pre-fucked mom. You just never do. Um, Today was a very lovely day. I don't like a nice day, personally. I don't I like a, like a shitty day because a nice day puts pressure on you to do shit. <laughs> I like a shitty day. I just go like, I mean, I would totally be out there. I would, I would be helping folks. And I took a long nap today. I took two or three naps. Actually, I take a lot of naps. I love naps. They're my favorite thing. At least they're big. Well, yeah, you like naps? For me better than sex even, because sex is great, but sex is complicated. I never had a nap where I was like, why the fuck did I do that? That was stupid. Oh, shit. Can't go to that restaurant anymore, that's for sure. An app is always 100% successful. So much, here's what I love about naps. A nap is like you get to kill yourself and take it back. How much do you wish you could just be like, I just want to fucking kill myself right now, but then I want to do other stuff after? <laughs> Suicide is a shocking notion for younger people. I'm 48, I'll flip through the brochure, I don't know, I can consider it. It's on the table. People say like, well, you shouldn't, uh, you know, like when you go to a therapist, they ask you very carefully your first day, have you had thoughts? Suicide? And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> so? That's the fucking question all day. I mean, the human race is made up of people who didn't kill themselves today. That's, that's who's here. Are people who are barely choosing to keep going. It's a daily choice. Life is a choice. You don't have to fucking do it. Get the fuck out. That's why I hate vampires. I know they're real. But I hate vampires, because they're annoying. Vampires always complain about their, their immortality. They're always like, oh, you don't know what it's like to live for centuries with no peace. Dude, go outside in the sun. Or shut the fuck up. You can go outside. Well, yeah, I thought so. I thought so. As most people choose to be alive. I mean, that doesn't make any sense. Yeah. Everybody who's here has chosen to be here. 100% of people didn't kill themselves. Um, except for the ones that did, and they don't count it. And it's interesting because life gets miserable. Life gets shitty. And still, folks do it. Folks would rather live the shittiest life you ever saw. Then end it. It's a really interesting thing. You ever look at somebody on a street and you're like, fuck, I don't know how. How is he keeping being that? You ever at a red light in your car, you look in the next car and you're like, oh, fuck, I don't know how. Some guy. He's got shit in the car. His window's a garbage bag that goes. What is holding up his suicide? What is keeping him going? And more interestingly to me, what would, what's, what would it take? What would it take for this guy to stop? Both windows are garbage bags? Like, what's the fucking... What's the... Most people choose life, even though, you know, running away will not solve your problems. That's the truth. But killing yourself solves all of them. Forever! It even solves world problems for you. What about ISIS? Kill yourself. Then we'll never get you. 
It's true. If everybody was afraid ISIS committed suicide, then they fucking lose. ISIS loses because they live in a world of people that don't give a shit what they're doing. We're gonna cut his head off. Go ahead. It's not fun now. part of being beheaded, I think, uh, I think the worst part of being beheaded is that you look really stupid right after. I think that's the worst part. anyway. If you get kidnapped, you should shave your head, because I don't, because they want to be able to do it, they can't. They can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, life is a choice. I have two children. That's a choice. It's a choice to have kids. You don't have to. It can uh, not happen. And then after you have them, you don't have to keep them. You don't. I choose to be a father every day. I get stuck. I can walk out. I could drown my kids in the tub. I could do that. Every day is a day I don't drown my kids in the tub. Every day. I'm not saying that I fill it up and they go, nah, and then drain it. I'm just saying that. It's a daily choice. I've thought about quitting being a dad. I've even decided to. Like I'm making breakfast for the kids six in the morning and this one comes over. And she goes, I don't know where my books are. <laughs> And I looked at her, and I thought, this is my last day. I'm going to feed you and take you to school. That's the end of our relationship. And I felt so good. It felt so fucking good. And it got me through the rest of the day, so I kept going. I wish I was a better person, because I'm a father. When, you're, when you don't have kids, what's the point? Anyway, no, no, just go fucking maraud and kill and steal and when you not. But when you have kids, you want to be a better person. Because I wish my I wish my kids had a better person as a father. That's the way I always think. Although they don't know me, they know me as their dad, but they don't know me. Who I really am is none of their business. <laughs> Seriously, if you're a parent, if you're a good parent, your kids don't know you. <laughs> they just know that party. They like, hey, you hungry? That's it. That's all they have to know. <laughs> Ask any kid, what's your father like? He's tall and he has the keys. <laughs> it doesn't matter. I do have rules in my house, but they all pertain to my behavior. Like I have a rule that I don't curse around my kids. I don't use bad words around my kids. That's the rule, but it does happen sometimes I break the rule. In a tense moment or something stressful, you know? And you say something you wish you hadn't said. Like the other day I was making dinner for my kids. And I gave my daughter a bowl of soup. And I said, uh, is your fucking soup? <laughs> like you can see how that was stressed. You can see how that was a tough situation. <laughs> my kids are really smart. They're smart. Like, what? We were listening the other day to the radio. Uh, during breakfast, we're listening to public radio because we're better than other people. So we were like, this is public radio. This is smart. And they had a, uh, the, the news on the radio had this story about uh, I don't know what it was about, but they kept using this phrase. They kept saying 9/11 deniers. And my daughter said, uh, she was, they kept saying it 9/11 deniers. <laughs> my daughter said, what is that? And I'm trying to explain to her like, well, it's people that think September 11th was a conspiracy by the government or that it didn't really happen. And she said, oh, I thought they were saying 9-11 deniers. <laughs> she thought they meant nine people <laughs> who just ain't buying this 11 bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of a small fringe group. It's only nine of them. They still got on the radio, but they're the 9-11 deniers. They go to the White House and they protest. It goes 10, 12, 13! We are my eight friends know it! We are the 9, 11 deniers! The government is making up numbers! 11 is propagated on the people by man! Thank 
13 and 14 and 15, and we do not have a one team. The government stole one team and two team. Gave us some bullshit. From 11 and 12. Now the fucking lying bitches.
Now Jesus, then he fucking nailed him to a cross. About 20 minutes from here. <laughs>
did her job. She raised you and it killed her. Leave her the fuck alone. Let her enjoy heaven. If you believe your mother's in heaven, don't you want her to be just having a good time? There's parties in heaven. Hey, we're having a cloud party. You want to come? It's going to be angels. I can't. I got to wash my son's game. He's going to be upset if I don't watch it. It's my turn to bring snack. I just think that when people die, they did their jobs. You should forget them because it's not fair. You know, like when you see a, a couple that's been married for many years and then one dies and the other one, you know, like, like an old couple. Like they've been married for 60 years, that kind of couple. Where whatever everybody hears how long they've been married, they get, oh, everybody's excited. They get applause based on the math of their lives all the time. You know those kind of couples? How long you've been married? 60 years. Oh! Isn't that wonderful? How do you know? You just know how long it's been. For 60 years, every morning he tells me I'm a piece of shit. Oh. Isn't that wonderful? You know that kind of couple? They got married 60 years ago in black and white in some fucking place now. They just walk slow together somewhere nobody walks. He's got a tan suit and a brown tie and she wears a dress with fruit on it. They just walk. It's cold. Yeah. Nice out yeah. Go get a cracker somewhere. Okay. And then one day, usually he dies first. They're walking and he goes, ah. Ah. Richard! Ah. Ah. Richard! Ah. And he dies. <laughs> so, <laughs> so now, <laughs> it's just her, just Rose. She's alone. She just stands in their house. Once in a while, somebody has to go get Rose to go to the wedding. Somebody's got to go in her house. Hey, Rose. Oh, fuck. Hey, Rose. Nadine's getting married, remember? Doesn't matter, just come on. <laughs> so, ten years go by, Rose is alone for ten years after Richard dies, and then now Rose is dying. Somebody's there with her on their phone. And Rose, is <laughs> Rose says, Well, at least now I get to be with my Richard forever. Where do people get that idea? I looked it up. No religion teaches that when you die, you get to ruin heaven for your dead spouse. Doesn't seem fair. Because Richard's been dead for 10 years. He's been in heaven for 10 years. And somebody comes up to him, hey, your wife is coming. <laughs> Yeah, Rose died, she'll be here in a minute. And then you guys are gonna be together forever.
this is not. It's been a one gay wedding. <laughs> I mean, you know, it was great. It was a gay Indian wedding. It was amazing, actually. If there's ever three words that have been waiting thousands of years to be in the same <laughs> sentence, it's gay Indian wedding. Because they all came together. Just colors and men and dee 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 dee. It was fucking spectacular. But, uh, I think gay marriage is, is great, but it's not as big a impact on society as uh, um, gay divorce is going to be. That's going to be a big <laughs> fucking deal. Because it's not like they're better at it than us. It's still, they're all going to fucking get divorced. And we're going to get. I think there's going to be something. Uh, entertaining about watching gay men fight over money. I just have that instinct, and I don't, I don't need to do a big cartoon of it for you because you're doing one on your own, head, so you don't need me. Get it? Whatever. Anyway, so. <laughs> but I, I've been to one, one gay wedding, and I, I, I've been to uh, really two weddings ever: my own and the gay one, and. Uh, and the one that shouldn't happen is mine. <laughs> yes. We got divorced. It was shitty. It was awful. Um, but that's everybody's in a shitty thing. That's the way life is. Uh, you're either alone or you're in a shitty thing. You're with somebody in a uh, fuck. I mean, that's as universal as life gets. You're either by yourself or you're in a thing, and you're like, oh, God damn, I can't. God, I, want to, I don't know, I can't get out, I can't get in, it's fucking awful. The only thing that can console you is that everybody's the same. You look at other people, you're like, they're so happy. No, they're not. No, they're not. Ask anybody, hey, how's it going with Monica? It's going great. Ask him three more questions, he'll start crying. <laughs> Any three questions. <laughs> you guys get along? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you like her parents? Yeah, yeah. Does she like your parents? I mean... <laughs> it's hard because my mom's really important. <laughs> Everybody's in a shitty thing, and I know there's some of you that are sitting out there going, mm -hmm. Nope. We're doing great. We're doing great. Really, give it some time. Okay, just fucking wait. No? I have a feeling it fuck you. You think you are. Fucking <laughs> arrogant people get in their relationships. It's never gonna get bad. That's like watching a horror movie and in the first minute you're like, I guess they'll all be fine. <laughs> <laughs> it's just the way it goes. And people protest, yeah, but we really love each other. Yeah, well, love plus time minus distance equals hate. That's just the way that goes. <laughs> That's just the way that goes. It's inevitable. If you love somebody and they love you, you're fucked. I mean, it's gonna, it'll be nice for a minute and be happy for that. You have to be respectful of love. You know, if you expect it to last, you're just being an asshole. People get amazed. I can't believe that a butterfly died because I shot it in the face. Like, why would that happen? Love is a fleeting, temporary thing. It's like one of those people that have, they have wands with soap and they make a, a bubble thing and it goes, ah, and everybody goes, ah, 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 and he goes, ah, shit. That's it, that's all you get. But people don't accept that. They stand there at the fucking soap going, what happened? <laughs> it's just the way that it works. And also, when you meet somebody, people get so excited. I met someone today. No, you didn't. No, you didn't meet anybody. You'll meet him later. <laughs> but you did not meet someone. You met someone he was being. You were being someone who met someone he was being. Later you'll fucking go, oh, shit. Because nobody is themselves when they're meeting people because you want someone to love you, so you're not you. Nobody goes to on a first date as themselves. Nobody shows up to a first date. Yeah, let's go. Fuck, <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I feel like shit. I'm just fucking tired, you know? <laughs> Where do you want to go? I don't fucking know. I don't know. Where do you want to go? What? No, I'm not doing that. <laughs> no way, I'm not doing that. I hate, I fucking hate that. You go. 
That's a person. Nobody shows up like that to a first date. People show up to a first date as something they couldn't possibly sustain. Just an impossibly crisp. Mm. Just so. Okay, just, yes, I always put on really well thought out crispy clothes. Every minute. I sleep in a fucking tuxedo. Are you kidding me? And they show up for the first date and they're like, hi. Hi. Ready? <laughs> Why are we laughing? It's not funny, but let's laugh. Yeah, the window here. Yeah. Just everywhere it goes, it's interesting. Yeah. And then I always am gonna talk to you like this, like really oh, same things. Oh, yes, that's all the time. And then I listen to you like this, like oh, mm -hmm. really. Kids are the best part of my life, and they came from the worst decision I ever made. <laughs> so how do you fucking, how do you navigate life? You don't, you just do it, you know? You know, people are like, I don't know, should we get married? Yes, it's not gonna be good, but just fucking, just, just keep doing shit. Just keep doing shit after shit. And then once in a while you get a nice thing. That's, just, that's as good as it gets, I think. But, uh... People try to figure life out, like, when should we have children? You just don't know, because you don't have them yet. You don't get the plan shit, because you don't know what it's like yet. People that are young couples that have decided to have children, they just sound dumb, because they don't know what the fuck they're talking about. They're like, trying to decide, should we have those ghosts over for dinner? And what should we serve them? You don't fucking know. <laughs> Young people are always like, we, we've decided to have kids because we decided now is a really good time. Well, you're not going to have kids now, stupid. I hope everything stays just like this for a year because that's how long it's going to take to actually have something. You go, we should have kids. Yeah, here we are. It's, you can't. Me and my ex-wife had kids. I mean, we had, when she was my wife, we didn't break up and then have kids. Um, we had kids because she really wanted children, and I just didn't want to get yelled at. That's what, that was my part. It's true. She was upset, she was yelling. I was like, okay, yeah, yeah, let's do it. It's so crazy that a human exists because I just had a weak will. Like, life sprang from, okay. I also thought we won't get pregnant. That's what I thought. It'll take a while because everybody I knew was struggling to get pregnant. They were going to special doctors and putting their sperm in a canister, whipping it around at the speed of light, and washing their vagina with yogurt and squatting over a berry bush to bed. It was a scheduled, it's four o'clock fucking right now, and you turn your legs up. All that science and no kids, they can't do it. There's only two ways to have kids. One is fuck your wife in her naked pussy, just fuck her. Just go, ugh, ugh, uh. And she's like, yeah. And you're like, yeah. And then 
you come. That's way one. Way two is even more reliable. Just get a baby. Just get one. There's extra babies on the floor all over the fucking place. Just go to somewhere and look for a baby. <laughs> but my wife wanted one that looks like her, so I said, okay, we'll make one from scratch. So we had sex with the intent of children for the first time, and she got pregnant right away. And I knew it while we were fucking that she was getting pregnant because I came a lot. It was a lot of cum. I was like, oh shit. It just really up my odds just now. I shot a lot of dice into this lady. There was probably a seven in there somewhere. It was a lot of cum. I mean, it was a human amount. It's not like I was coming and she's like, Prozac. No, 
was like, really? She said, yeah, it actually works. It calms her right down. And, and, and then she said, I think you should think about it though very carefully. It's a big decision, so go home and think about it. I was like, put four in her asshole right now. <laughs> Just put four, whatever the fuck you're talking about, in her asshole. Give it to me, I'll do it. I don't care what the dose is, four sounds good to me. You know, shit was happening in her brain. Give her heroin, I don't care. Just shoot her. That's a nice dog. I had no fear. 
I'll go up to the most popular girl in school. You want to be my girlfriend? And she's like, no. <laughs> That's all right. I'm going to jerk off to this later. It was funny. <laughs> I had no problem asking girls out. I asked any girl out that I liked. And no other kids did it either. They, no kids asked girls out. When it, and my daughters told me that kids still do this. The boy asks his friend to ask her friend to ask her what she would say if he asked her out. How do children just know how to do this complicated, <laughs> like Elizabethan parlor thing? Please inquire Were I to request her presence, um, what would be her answer? Indeed, my lady, we will enjoy your company at the pizza place. <laughs> and that is well. May I finger her? <laughs> you are both, sir, and you may.
I wish I could have some moment in my life where I'm like, ah, I'm an owl. That's what it is. <laughs> I just have to blink slow and eat a mouse. <laughs> Life gets confusing. I'm 48, which is a pretty good vantage point in life, because I can remember my childhood, and I can see 80. I can see me at 80. When you're a kid, you can't believe old people. You're like, how do you look at your own hands without screaming? Like, it's just inconceivable. But I can see 80. I got friends that are 70. I fucked a 60-year-old, so I'm kind of like I've seen it. Felt 60-year-old flesh. It was nice. It was. It was particularly nice. Because she was 60. It was. You'll find out. Anyway. Uh, but life still gets confusing like that. I was watching. You ever seen Magic Mike? You ever seen that movie? Magic Mike. It's a movie about male strippers starring Matthew McConaughey and uh, Channing Tatum. And I've never seen it. I, I haven't. I won't see it. I refuse to watch that movie, Magic Mike, because I saw the preview a bunch of times and I didn't like it. I mean, I didn't like it. It, it upset me that I liked it. <laughs> because there's one part I, I really like. This is one part. It's this part where Matthew McConaughey, he's got no shirt on, and he goes, The law says you can't touch. But I think I see a lot of lawbreakers out there. It's just the way that. I think I see a lot of mob breakers out there. I just really like that part. And every time the thing comes on, I'm like, all right, hear that part. And then he says it, and I'm like, it's really good. That's really good the way he says that. And then Channing Tatum comes out with no shirt on. He's like, I'm like, fuck. And I have to turn it off because I'm getting all turned on. And I'm upset. And then I'm walking around my house later and I'm like, well, I'll say you can too. <laughs> I go up to my dog, but I think I see a lot of breakers right here. <laughs> and it's weird because I don't really do impressions, but I do that one pretty good because I think about it all the time. <laughs> I'm not gonna watch the movie because I just know if I sit and watch Magic Mike, Something's gonna happen. It's not even like a suspicion. I'm 100% sure that if I watch Magic Mike, I'm going to have a gay orgasm. And I don't want one. I don't want one. I just won't ever do it. And people say, like, you're suppressing. Yes, I fucking am. That's the point. That's my right. Because that's about me. I wouldn't discriminate against someone for being gay, but I have every right to discriminate against my own possible buddy <laughs> homosexuality. I have every right to just push it down. <laughs> like it's a dude I'm trying to make lonely. <laughs> and it's, it's weird because I haven't developed a generalized attraction to men. I'm not into men sexually, just fucking Matthew McConaughey <laughs> and Chan Tatum. Shit. Those dudes? Fuck. I think what it is is I'm only gay for the best. I'm a top shelf gay. I'm not retail gay. I'm not off the rack gay. Because I'll, I'll try the best anything. There's a lot of things that I don't like, but I'll try the best. Like, I don't drink cognac. I don't like cognac. But I never tried the best. Like, if I went to someone's house and there's like a fancy house with a library and pool tables, you know? Like a villain, if you're hanging out at a villain's house. <laughs> and he's like, would you like to see cognac? <laughs> Well, this cognac was 500 years old, 300 years ago. It's very rare. It's valued at $7,000 a glass. Yeah, I'll try that. <laughs> that sounds good. Mm. For dinner, would you like to eat a live turtle? A live turtle? Yes. 
I don't think so. Well, this turtle <laughs> comes from a tiny island in the South Pacific. He was flown here this very afternoon. He's eaten nothing but turtles his entire life. And he is the last of his species. <laughs> Can't wait to eat that fucking turtle. <laughs> to bite off his screaming face and end his people with my mouth. Mm. You have excellent taste. After dinner, would you like to suck a man's cock? <laughs> Listen, I've had a very nice time, but I, uh, Well, this man's cock. <laughs> this man's cock has been soaking in olive oil since he was five years old. <laughs> and he has eaten nothing but penises his entire life. <laughs> this man's cock is extraordinary. It is the greatest cock in the history of mankind. And if you want, you can suck it. <laughs> can I see it? <laughs> I mean, I'd like to, to see it. I hated my father's penis. The first penis I ever hated. 
It was my dad. Because you got to see your dad's dick all the time. When you're a kid, you go to a restaurant, you got to pee right next to your dad. Or you go to a, a ball game. If you go to a stadium, it's just a trough. And the men just stand there. And the little boys are down here, and the dicks are eye level. They just all <laughs> missing dicks in both directions, like a chorus line. And my dad's horrible dick was right here. My dad's Mexican, too. It's true. My dad's Mexican. I'm not. I'm not Mexican. Just because some Mexican fucked my mom for years doesn't make me Mexican. It just makes her a whore. <laughs> anyway, my dad, excuse me, my dad, my dad, he had a Mexican heart, just Catholic, uncut, fucking tapered, awful, organic, free-range Mexican dick. It was just like a, like a farmer's market turnip that somebody just... And the pee sprayed out of it. I'm like, Dad, open your dick before you pee out of it. It's like you're pissing out of the corner of a pillowcase. And it's weird because my dad... My dad has had a weird life. When I was 10 years old, my parents divorced, and my dad turned into a Jew. And, well, I mean, he converted to <laughs> Judaism. He didn't turn into a Jew. It's <laughs> not like my dad one day was like, <laughs> 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 He also made uh, fake legs, and he sold them when he did well. I mean, they were meant to be fake. He wasn't trying to fool anybody. It was, uh, it's not like you buy a leg for my grandfather, and you get it home, and it's a fucking fake. That you ripped us off? It was a prosthetic. It's a better word for it. Anyway, then he made his own leg, and he went to a dance. And he met a beautiful, dark-eyed Mexican beauty, my grandmother, and he danced with her. And uh, by the end of the story, she always says that by the end of the dance, they fell in love. But there's a part of the story where at some point, she said to him, I'm Catholic. And my Jewish grandfather said, uh, yeah, me too. <laughs> he just said, yeah. I'm sure he was just trying to fuck her. I think that was the idea. 
which doesn't offend me. I wouldn't be here right now if my grandmother didn't, my grandfather didn't want to talk to my grandmother. But he fell in love with her, and they had a family, so he just stuck with it. And he raised eight kids. <laughs> like, and he went to church with her, but he was secretly Jewish the whole time. He held on to it, but it was a secret. Until so my dad was a teenager and they had a fight, and, and him and my grandmother, and he's like, I'm, I'm a Jew, you fucking idiot, or whatever, I don't know what happened. But it all came out, and then it was okay, but I heard this story when I grew up, and I, last time I saw my grandfather, he was 90, and I asked him about it. I said, how did you do that? How did you give up your religion? And he said, I loved your grandmother, I loved her very much. And also, he said, uh, he said the Christians want everything anyway. So I thought, let them have it. That's what he said to me. The Christians want everything anyway. And I thought about that a lot, and I think he's right. It's really true. We like to tell ourselves, this is a multi-faith world and every religion is equal. Not really. Not really. The Christians want everything a long time ago. If you don't believe me, let me ask you this question. What year is it right now? What year is it, according to every government, of every country in the fucking world. This is a big thing for one group to get. What year is it? Anyone, just yell it out, sir. Yell out the year. 2016. That's a number. What does that number mean? It's important. Because we're counting to it in unison as a species. We're literally going one, two. We have a party. It's the whole world to say this is how long it's been. How long it's been since what? Since there were ever people? That would be smart to be counting that. It's not what we're counting at all. It's been 2016 years. Since what? Anybody you know now? Since Jesus died, how the fuck did they get that? That's not a Monday off of school in October. That is, there was no time before our guy. Actually, but there was a lot of time. There's actually more time before him than after. Well, that time goes backwards. <laughs> and everybody said, sure. How the fuck did everybody just go, yeah. Yeah, we'll all use that system. Let's count most of history backwards. It drives me crazy when I see a scientist who looks very atheist and he's like, this rock was from 600 BC. What the fuck are you doing? Because it's a global thing, the whole world. Every time I watch New Year's Eve, they always show New Year's around the world. And they show like a little tiny island south of uh, Australia. And there's people there that just wear grass and they don't have clocks. But they're like, Umbelinda 2016. And it goes around the world. Oh, the 2016 today. It goes around the world. Death to all Christianity in 2016. <laughs> and it goes around the world. The Jews are quietly keeping track. It's really 5,766. But we don't have that. We're just keeping that for us. So we do snap out of it. But that's our thing. It's okay. I'll write yours on my check. It's fine. I don't want to make a thing. What about Chinese New Year? Okay, next time you're doing your taxes, put a little picture of a monkey where the year goes. <laughs> Just write monkey and see what happens to your funds. It is the year of our Lord, 2016, Jesus the clock on the nose. And it's crazy because they made it up after most of the years had happened already. Somebody went, that's what those years were from now on. <laughs> I mean, you know, right? I, I, some people don't seem to know that the, like the year three was not the year three. During the year three. <laughs> Nobody back then was walking around, hey, what year is it? It's three. <laughs> yeah, but I'm 28. How can I be 28? If there's only been three. Because uh, you were born in BC 25. Remember when it went backwards? Oh, fuck, that was stressful. What the hell was that like? What year is it? Ten. What's next year? Nine. 
fuck are we counting down to? Thank you. 